Hi everyone, this is a video in response to a Robinson Mason, Robinson Mason, who left a comment on a different channel on a video um, I was happened to be watching, and he was interested in the basics of wargaming, and does anybody know of any videos about this, About and he specifically asked for basics of scale, line of sight, um, how movement works, terrain, scoring hits in a generic tabletop war game. Now, okay, before you carry on watching, if you already play war games or you're a subscriber, you're probably not going to be interested in this at all. So, switch off now. This is for brand new players, uh, and I have got no preparation for this. I just felt, well, there's probably better videos out there, but I couldn't find any. Hmm. So I just um, go for it. Um, so you're talking about the basics of scale. Well, there's different scales of miniature. I'll hold this one up, it's not completed. But this is a 28 millimeter scale. He's a space marine in a game called Warhammer 40K. Okay, so that's typical um, size. 28 millimeter, you get that a lot. You get that in a lot of games. Um, <clears throat> but there are different scales. But before we go into that, some games have their own specific miniatures and models, such as Warhammer um, or Bolt Action or um, you know War Machine or Hordes. But you know it is possible to proxy other models for that, providing your opponent's okay with it. But when it comes to historical war games, which I strongly suspect you are talking about or are interested in, you can use any scale. Now, like I say. That's a space marine, so he's a bit bigger than a, a human anyway. Yeah, just put him on. Let me get this guy off here. Again, not he's not finished, but this is a, this is a cultist. But he's a, basically a human in 28 millimeters. So that's the size of a 28 millimeter human being. Okay. Now you can get 15 millimeter, which is quite popular, which is you know a bit down there somewhere. Six millimeter. And you can get even smaller than that. You know, other there are other ones as well. Twenty um, and so on. And Eighteen. What you got to do in order to choose your scale? See some games. If you want a generic. Okay, in fact, hold on a moment. Hi, back again. I just have to find my book. Now you want a generic war game? Well. Black Powder is a very good generic set of rules that you can use for uh, several different periods. Um, so 1800s, the American War of Independence, right up to the Sudan, uh, which is 1884. So you've got 1777 to 1884, um, typically in there. And this will tell you, this is a set of rules, this is just but one set of rules uh, which will cover everything you need to know how to play. Okay? And you got like World War II uh, games, bolt action, this is the rules for bolt action. This uses 28mm figures, but you can use 15. There's another World War, oops, excuse me. There's another World War II game, for instance, called Flames of War. Uh, and their, their specific models are in 15mm, so you can use any 15mm models for it. So you can use any any scale you want, but now, let's have another sip of tea a moment. I'm sorry this is all over the place. I haven't prepared this at all, as you can tell. But um, other than writing down what you were, were interested in, and you said scale, picking a scale. Um, take an example. Myself, I'm interested in getting into the American Civil War, so I want to find a good set of rules that cover that. Black powder seems to cover that well. So, like I say, they're a good generic set of rules, and you can go to 15 millimeter there. You can convert the scale the movements from inches to centimeters I'll talk about that in a moment and um, what you want to do is to, in order to pick your scale pick what type of game you're interested in playing if you are interested in epic massive battles big you know cinematic scope big tables loads of models on the table you want something um, small the smaller the better 15 at least 15 6 would be really epic you could get like hundreds of models on the table and you don't need as big a space to do it. If you're looking at uh, skirmish type games then look at 28mm um, of these here. 
Having said that, Warhammer does tend to use a lot of models, even though it's 28mm. They just want your money. Anyway, so that's that. Light rail. We'll cover movement first. Basically, movement. Um, let's just tilt the camera down somewhat here. You need to get yourself a measuring tape. Most games are in inches. Like I say, some convert to centimetres for a scale difference, but that's fine. And for the purpose of an explanation here, in Warhammer, a typical man or unit moves six inches on the movement phase. So what you do, say this was the gaming tape. Well, no, it's not a very good example of one. Just zoom in a bit. Uh, there. I know it's not a very good example of one, but what you would do is edge of the base to the edge of the distance you want to move. So six inches, he moves up. That's it. That's all it is. Line of sight is simply well, if you had some terrain, and I don't have any handy here right now, but say he was behind there, and um, where's that other one gone? Oh, I don't know. Um, say this guy was over here. Can he see him? Well, you're gonna see. Get, get down. Have a look. If you can see him, and you're not, well, you're not sure. Get yourself a laser pointer. Yeah, he can see him. So that's line of sight. Can you physically get down and see? Line of sight. Then. Depending on what weapon he has, depends on the range he can shoot at. Is he shooting with guns, bows and arrows, that type of thing, you know, blow darts, uh, shuriken, or is it tanks firing guns? And they've all got their different ranges. So again, you just take measure and uh, you just measure from the barrel of the gun to the, uh, the target itself. If it's in range, yes you can. Then you roll to hit. And you roll, do that depending on the rules of whatever rule set you're using. You know, in Black Powder it'll be something, in, War Power, in Warhammer it'll be something else. You so many dice for this, you need this much to hit. Depends on what the armor value is of the... Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a whole myriad of um, things to take into account when you're doing that. <clears throat> um, so that's uh, how, basically how to move terrain, like I say. Depends on what scale you're using. Um, I've, I play mostly 28mm, so all my terrain is in 28mm. Um, but then you can buy 15mm terrain, which is a bit smaller, and so on. Uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be terribly proportioned because terrain isn't very proportioned anyway. When you look at 28mm buildings, take the lid off and you see how many 28mm figures you can fit in there, and then visualize for how many real people you could fit in there in real life. It's just, um, <clears throat> bear in mind, it's just a game. And it's just to give you that feel of um, sense of realism, recreating a battle or, or changing the course of history or whatever it is you're interested in. So, um, yeah, like I say, <clears throat> if you want a generic uh, rule set Robinson, then you get, go for the black powder by Warlord Games. There. That'll cover a, a, like a load of stuff. So I recommend Black Powder for <clears throat> a lot of it. If you want like World War II, then look at Flames of War or Bolt Action. Um, other than that, just scour the internet for different videos. Um, like I say, there'll be if you can find if you can find better videos out there telling you the basics of a general generalistic view like I'm trying to do then, then great which it shouldn't be too difficult because I just I've just literally cobbled this together um, because I saw you were um, you were interested and um, I think people need all the um, help they can get when they get into this hobby it's a fantastic hobby and it's not just about the gaming it's also about the making of the building of the models and the painting them yourself and then when you actually come down put them on the uh, tabletop and it's all your own work and it's just a fantastic feeling um, whether it's historical or science fiction or whatever it is. So, um, so Robertson Mason, this is for you. And anybody else that's interested in beginning war games, get out there. Um, if you want to contact me, ask me any questions because I've left out 
like 99% of, of what you need to know, I'm sure. Then hit me up at uh, miniwarzone at gmail.com and I will respond to you, um, well, pretty much as soon as I get it, really. As soon as I read it, I will respond to you and uh, answer any questions you may have. Um, I can get, get you a list of possible games together. Depends. Let me just let me know, guys, what period of history you're interested in, or what type of game you're interested in, and I can give you um, a rough idea of what games are out there and what rules to look at. Uh, some of them you can get online, so for free. So you know, just just let me know, guys. So like I say, if you're still watching this and you're right, and you are already a war gamer, then well done you. Um, other than that. Yeah, I'll see you guys and my subscribers on the next video. I'm hoping to do an on the bench video next, hopefully. I uh, don't know what the heck I'm going to talk about. Uh, I've got nothing planned, but um, I want to get some guys done. I want to get some Space Marines painted up, so I can do that. Talk to you guys, you can paint along, and we'll have some fun. Anyway, until next time, guys, remember, all brushes lead to war, and I'll see you on the next video. Happy Wargaming.